ladies and gentlemen, on behalf of our CEO, Mr. Tony Aid and Telecom Review Group, I would like to welcome you all, panelists and attendees, to today's Telecom Review webinar entitled Spotlight on Oman's Digital Journey. I'm Christine Ziedeh, the Director of Content for Media and Events at Telecom Review Group, and it is my pleasure really to lead, to lead you through today's topic before giving the floor to our esteemed panelists and moderators. Digital transformation has been labeled as the potion to success at the level of all industries and sectors. It has been on top of all countries' national agenda, given its role in contributing to economic success and social well-being. The Sultanate of Oman has realized the importance of digitalization and has made an impressive progress in its, in its digital journey. In today's session, we will hear from leading telecom players about how Oman was able to succeed in its digital endeavors and the achievements made so far in alignment with Vision 2040. We will hear as well about the initiatives launched in the Sultanate that aim to leverage and monetize the most advanced technologies, including 5G and AI. Where does the digital journey lead and what's next? Let's discover that in the next 90 minutes. I now give the floor to Dr. Abdullah al Baluchi, technology <coughs> consulting partner at Ernest & Young, who will moderate this session and will introduce our esteemed panelists. Okay, thank you very much, Christine, for, for the yes. opening and for your warm welcoming to our uh, audience. So, ladies and gentlemen, Thank you very much for your interest and for your time joining us where I promise you it will be an interesting uh, panel discussion that we will have, especially with our valuable uh, guests and panelists. Um, we we had uh, like discussed few elements last year as well. So I think this year, what is different? We are bringing also new people to, to ensure that we, we bring the best of the best as well when it's come to sharing the learns uh, lessons and sharing the experiences and the thoughts that we have from the bright panelists we have today with us. So without any further delay, I think uh, let me jump in, quickly introduce our panelists uh, in today's uh, discussion. So we have uh, Mr. KK from from the, the CEO, CCO of Orido Oman. Um, we have also uh, the CEO of Friendly Mobile Oman, Mr. Shadley, welcome to, to the panel discussion today. We have also with us uh, the VP and head of Ericsson GCC, Mr. Nicholas. Welcome, uh, Mr. Nicholas, uh, with us today. And we have also the CEO of Vodafone Oman, uh, Mrs. Anith. So welcome also to the panelists. I will give, of course, each one of you, please, uh, few, like a few minutes just to introduce yourself in maybe more <laughs> appropriate manner for the panel discussion. So if you allow me, maybe we can start from, from where I see in my screen, Mr. Shadley, please, can you start introducing yourself quickly? Yeah, my name is uh, Shadla. Thank you, Dr. Abdullah. Thank you, Watelcom, for having, us, uh, uh, for having me on the, the session today. Um, uh, so basically, my name is Shadla Absalam. As you mentioned, um, I've been recently appointed last year, earlier last year, CEO of Friendly Mughal Oman, but I've been in the telecom space for the past 20 years, uh, all locally here in Oman. So I've worked with multiple operators here. Um, and uh, I've seen firsthand multiple firsts uh, in terms of the access technologies that this been launched um, and, and basically the, 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 the genesis of how digital transformation has actually basically started. So it's actually part of some of those, uh, those firsts. So um, yeah, I'm excited to be here. I'm excited, excited to basically uh, share uh, any, any learnings that I can share and also basically to get learnings uh, from, from the rest of the panel. Thank you. Thank you, Shadley. And Anith, since I see you next on my screen, yes. uh, please, can you? Yes, my name is Anet Guerra. Um, this has been a journey for me. It's been a bit more than 30 years in telecommunications. So I come from knowing and understanding very traditional um, network systems to a 100% digital operation like Vodafone Oman. So um, I've been in operations, in telecom operations here in uh, US, Latin America. Um, I'm the mother of two. And I am passionate about cybersecurity. Great, thank you, Aneth. And uh, Nicholas, with your smile, please uh, if you move next. 
hello everybody. I'm uh, Nicholas Blixel. I'm uh, from uh, Sweden, a Swedish national, but I grew up in uh, in France. That's why I have a little bit of a French accent when I speak English. I've been uh, with Ericsson for about 17 years. I've been uh, following the technological evolution from all over the world, living in uh, Southeast Asia, Africa, North America, Europe, and now uh, in Dubai, heading the GCC, which is extremely exciting uh, how at the forefront of technology, those not all of them, but many countries are, and Oman is one of them that we're going to talk about today. I'm a father of two. And I'm uh, I'm passionate about technology. Thank you, thank you, Mr. Nicholas. And QK. Hello, how are you doing? Um, I love how you mispronounced uh, QK because it's I'm used to have my name mispronounced in any in every possible way. So uh, <laughs> don't don't worry at all. My name is uh, is Kike. I'm new. I'm new into the company, into the region, into the country, not into the industry, but uh, a lot of new news for me because I took uh, over the CCO of uh, Orido in Oman uh, in March. So I just barely passed my probation period. So Orido is stuck with me now because I, they didn't fire me yet. So uh, majority of my career has been uh, in uh, Vodafone. Um, 16, 17 years in Vodafone. I started my career in BCG in Spain. Then the bulk of my years in Vodafone before joining, I was working in United Group, which is a media and a telco leader into the southeast region of uh, Europe. And uh, now I'm here, really excited about it. Also a father of two. Probably my passions are not that much cybersecurity and technology. So I try to have passions outside of my, let's say, telco world. But uh, for sure, it is something that still uh, moves me and drives me because there's many years into it. You know, great, thank you very much. And uh, welcome again uh, to everyone from our valued uh, panelists, of course, we are so excited to learn from you today and hear from you, which will be beneficial to everyone. So if we start with no further delay, I think the digital transformation journey, it's, it's across and it's not maybe something new that we hear. However, uh, saying that uh, year after year and time after time, there is a lot of changes happening, whether it's in the journey itself, whether it's in the experiences or, or in the dynamics happening around. So I think starting with this, maybe, uh, Gina, Shadley, if, if we talk, maybe start talking about why why all of that focus on the digital transformation, especially when we talk maybe in telecom, many of the people that might not realize how the digital transformation taking place in the telecom and caused sometimes by the telecom is, is imp impacting and benefiting everyone, whether it's... Uh, the society, whether it's other initiatives run in the country or even on the customers themselves. So if you shed the light uh, briefly on that, uh, be appreciated. Yeah, great. Thank you for that question, uh, Dr. Abdullah. So if you look at digital transformation, if you look at telco in general, what, what do we, I mean, telco in general purely is basically uh, a business that is one on, was analog, you know, ridden for quite some time, right? Um, and I think if you basically think of what the essence of what we do is, is that we are here basically for revenue, for our customer base, uh, through ARPA growth, through you know, uh, lower churns. However, uh, if you basically look at where we are today versus where we were before, uh, previously it's easy for you to go out into the market, you know, go, go through different channels uh, and basically mass those base and grow your revenues in, in that particular fashion. However, uh, it's becoming uh, much more uh, uh, difficult to actually say, you know, how do you basically grow the customers? Uh, you know, it's because as the market gets saturated, you have more mobile market penetration, you have more people that have mobile phones. Uh, what ends up happening is that you need to focus more on the digital transformation in terms of moving customers uh, from analog to digital. So if you if you look at prior to COVID, if you think of 2019, things were quite difficult in terms of, you know, uh, just focusing on digital. But right now you have more people thinking about e-commerce, uh, thinking about how they basically can activate online. Um, so for, from a telco perspective, it's essential really only for, uh, for, for us to basically grow, uh, not only grow our revenues, but also at the same time, uh, fundamentally basically move from a value, volume-based model to basically a value-based centric model. And by doing that, you actually have to pivot actually to digital. Um, and and uh, essentially how that basically happens is that you think of the journey in terms of 
how do you basically act, you know, access the customer to basically how you get them to utilize the service from basically onboarding themselves uh, through an online app to basically going into uh, 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 basically using the services autonomously. Um, and uh, this is basically what it does for, for, for the telco operation. It helps us reduce our cost in terms of customer acquisition. It basically helps us basically personalize our services when we try, basically uh, try to target a customer. Specifically, when I look at my segment, it's a working class segment, and, the, and try to basically get, get these customers on board to use the digital services has basically been a, a journey. Uh, but we, we see the shift, we see the pivot, and, and uh, the, the, basically the idea for them to say, if we want to start using things in a much more digital fashion, because we, we understand the concept, uh, but at the same time, we, we understand that this is our way of trying to personalize our services to customers, uh, giving them the full autonomy, and also basically uh, help us leverage and basically go our revenues by helping us to reduce our cost and manage our, and manage our services much more efficiently. So in, in essence, it's, it's a way for us to, uh, the, the journey has been, it's still ripe with a lot of challenges, but um, it's, it's a journey that I, I think uh, you know, we're going through and everybody else is going through and, it, it, uh, uh, and, and it's still, still ways of, of us basically getting to a promise line. Yeah, great, uh, Mr. Shaz. Definitely, I agree with you that the digital tra transformation is, is go giving a big impact on everyone, even including the daily life uh, that we are living as citizens and others. So, uh, Miss Anif, based on your experiences and the solid experience you, you operated, maybe in one of the also telecom companies who are heavily dependent on the digital presence and others, what, what is your perspective as well and when it's come to the maybe realize the benefits of the digital transformation and the digital elements? I think that there are two, the digitalization for us is a path to opportunities and options. And I think that this is this is why it's so important. But it's also, it affects the, the process in terms of operations and the customer experience so much that the focus is to fold it, no? At least for a, for a telecom. In the case of the operation, for us, the introduction of automation, introduction of AI has been quite important in many different areas of the of the company so that we are able not only to see efficiencies in the way the work is done, but also to be able to identify mistakes faster and more efficiently. Also, you know, energy saving, big ticket item for a telecom company. So there's a number of things that in the in optimizing the operation, being digital or becoming digital is such an important thing. But at the same time, it allows you to see the customer from a different perspective because what it all ends up being in this in this competitive environment in this or any other in, in, in any other country is what kind of customer experience you are able to provide. So uh, being a company born digital then is not just that we don't understand the pain of getting here, is that for us, the my Vodafone app has become everything <clears throat> for the customer, from the onboarding, which is a market first in, in, in Oman, from, from how we onboard customers to what kind of experiences this customer has on the on the app. It's it's quite a it's quite a it's quite has been quite a journey, but a, a very successful one. Now, does that mean that everybody is digitalized? No. Does that mean that everything that we do uh, it's only and exclusively digital? No, because we also know that in this journey, we need to adapt. And adapting to the different market segments has also been part, has also been part of the process. So, you know, not from, as I said, from the network perspective to how we, how we onboard customers, what is it that the customer is able to get once they have the Vodafone app has been quite an important um, uh, item in the country in terms of digitalization. And we will continue in the journey of, you know, getting more and more customers digitalized, but we also understand that we need to do it in some market segments at their own pace. Yeah. No, no, it's a very interesting. And also I get very interesting point from what you mentioned, which is uh, what is the feedback or the impact from the clients uh, from the customers the, like requirements and demands in the markets which is also maybe always get as a feedback to the strategies when we talk about digital transformation and ensure that it's addressed so i feel like 
customers, they have a say as well on the digital transformation journey that telecom is doing, definitely. So based on that, uh, Nicolas, like, since you are maybe supporting also the telecoms and working with them closely um, when it's come to to achieving maybe many elements of their digital t transformation journey like do do you see any challenges maybe uh, coming into that maybe what you heard or what you witnessed yourself or what you, what you came across Thank you for this question. I like what I hear so far. I mean the organizational issues that uh, is are facing the customer experience uh issues that are being faced but we have ericsson i mean if we take a few step backs i mean ericsson we've been in oman for 50 years 51 years now so we we uh, started the oman was already visionary in telecommunication uh, 50 years ago and he has grown all the way to today which is a 5g country yeah. so ericsson we are working with the um, with the the operators in oman in order to lay down the 5G foundation, which makes it possible to do a digitalization journey for the Vision 2040. So that, that's that, that's the role we are uh, we are playing in the in the in the ecosystem. Of course, it's it's easier said than done, right? I mean, we can install network with very high speeds. I've heard like the latest record was the 30 gigabit per second uh, last week. So it's extremely fast, low latency. So you can really have use cases that uh, requires uh, low latency, so self-graphing cars, uh, automated factories, uh, ports, and so forth. I mean, the imagination is there. I mean, the ideas are there. But then you need to, of course, implement those. And that's where the industry has to work together from the vendors from our side, because we have the overview of all the operators across the world, how we can share what has been done towards uh, towards Oman, and that takes that takes a bit of a uh, that takes a bit of time, but the technology is ready and it's there. But so far with five G, we have been able to see in Oman something that we haven't seen in the rest of the world that is quite unique. It's the FWA, basically fixed wired access, so that you don't dig the fiber, you have the 5G radio that goes directly into the building with a with a router or CPE as we call it in the in the business, and you get directly home broadband. And we see for the last three years, one operator, 92% of all the home broadband connection are via 5G, and that that shows the the enthusiasm to use the technology to its maximum extent for 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 Oman. Yeah, no, no, great, definitely. Um, and and KK, from your side, like, um, since you mentioned also working maybe different parts and and coming to Oman, or maybe you you are seeing maybe what's happening in Oman from I would say someone who's coming and seeing things maybe differently. So, what is your thoughts about uh like the digital transformation overall, or even what uh, has been mentioned by the rest of panelists? when it's come to challenges, when it's come to whether it's come maybe to the different situation you see in like an Oman market that's uh, relevant to the digital transformation? I think I think there's a lot of things that uh, caught me by surprise when I came and not only, I mean, the heat and the culture. I mean, <laughs> many other things of the business as well. So um, I was actually very positively surprised about the level of digitalization that you have seen. So I think in terms of many aspects of customer onboarding experience, uh, top-ups online. I think it is a very mature market, but there are certain aspects in which probably we're not reaching the whole capacity that we should have in terms of sales. I think the, the focus of uh, what we're doing and how we're investing in infrastructure, how do we maximize the CapEx intensity uh, and how do we make the most of the networks is something that it is there. But in certain aspects like personalization, uh, digital marketing, et cetera, I think the market is not as mature as uh, many other things that we've seen. For sure, what stands out is that we have a clear vision of Oman 2040, and then we have the right ambition on how to evolve the country at being the digital hub of, of the Gulf. And that is a very bold vision. The thing is that we need to make sure that all the investments and all the strategies and all the competitive dynamics get up there and that we operate into a favorable environment in which these investments can succeed. Because at the end of the day, 
of course, we're all company that needs to to maximize our roses. And and, and I believe that this is probably what would define uh, the digitalization goal of being achieved or not. Yeah. No, no. Uh, in, in the great light uh, of what you mentioned, KK, I will just move to Chadley. Chadley, based on what uh, KK mentioned about the challenges maybe that we might face in, in one market and maybe for every organization, of course, it will be different experience when it's come to its own journey uh, in the digital transformation. So from your side, like what, what you would say maybe about some of the challenges you face or at least some of the areas you feel like as, as a telecom, we, we should focus on. The, we focus our investment there. We focus into developing more strength in that to help us even fast track or speed up the digital transformation journey. So um, if you, one of the major challenges obviously is digital inclusion. So um, if, you, if you look at Oman just in general, right? So you have your, your array of segments so um, the segment, so I'll basically look at the challenge that I currently have, right? So the challenge that I have right now is my, my segment, my core segment that I target is my, my work for class segment, which hence is a blue collar segment. Um, they're price sensitive. Uh, they, they're, they're, you know, uh, they're, uh, they're, they're still, and in, uh, in terms of uh, understanding what digital is, um, uh, it's not at their forefront. Um, uh, they, uh, and, and so, I mean, one of the things, so how we were basically, because we've been in the market for the past 15 years. So what, we, what we've seen over the past few years and the, our pivot to digital transformation honestly started two years ago. So if you just, I'll just take an, give an example, our online app, which, which was a, a static app, was literally basically a top-up app. Uh, two years ago, we decided to get fine. We're going to formulate it. We're going to make it into a, a, a full, a full, full uh, app where basically customers can manage you and all their services autonomously. Either, either through top up, either through purchasing a, a, a bundle or whatnot. Uh, what, what we've seen is, is that uh, uh, the, the process for them to basically actually, the, the, I, one of the challenges is to basically get them to understand how to use a service um, uh, and, and basically engage with it. That has been a challenging part. So the digital inclusion part is still, is still something that's, so we say it's mature, mature to some aspects, but not necessarily all over. Um, and we're talking about a big segment of our population. Um, um, I, I, I think this is probably not only focused obviously here, it's basically across the world, um, but it, it, is, it is prominent when we basically look at the segment that we're basically targeting. So it is a, it's an education for us. And obviously using telco, to uh, uh, you know, to to still try to basically you know transform into other verticals, uh, be it fintech or whatnot, is that also basically is uh, uh, because when you move into fintech, so say for instance we're we're in the precipice of basically launching our fintech operations, and what what, what we want to experience, but we haven't experienced it yet, but we've heard from other markets that basically have the similar similar products, is getting the customers to use the service digitally um, and and uh, trust the service. Um, uh, that, that's basically a challenge. So that, that's a challenge, uh, but we, we understand the challenge. We, uh, we were part of Beyond One Group, which is our, our, our uh, parent company in, in the region. And uh, their, their modus operandi is to basically use, you know, to basically enhance and create digital communities. So um, uh, yes, we're not native in terms of digital, but the idea is to basically get to that stage. Um, and ideas through that is to you know educate our customers and educate the public in general with regards to how to basically uh, you know leverage the digital experience. So I think the challenge is still we're, we're at a stage where we, we, we need to basically uh, educate customers uh, uh, how to basically use the services um, and uh, and you know how to basically uh, navigate the online uh, online uh, space. But uh, you know that's that's a that's a part of the journey. Yeah. You know, and Anith, uh, if you consider uh, also, because I'm aware like uh, sometimes the size of the organization or, or the telecom operator is also having uh, distinguishing the challenges they might face because it's, it's different if we talk about a small teleco, when they go to their digital transformation, it might be easier, it might be difficult, I don't know, this is what I want to hear from you. So from your perspective, Maybe if you shed the light on some of the few challenges you have seen uh, re relevant to your side and, and also maybe what kind of maybe strategies you took to, to, to overcome them. I think that one of the, in the path of digitalization, the number one item that need, you need to check is actually your cybersecurity and your security posture. 
simply because opening the digital door means that you now are open to a number of new threats out there that you could actually protect yourself in a different fashion before. So digitalization also has its, uh, its situations that you need to deal with. So I would say that fundamentally on that specific front, and, and there are many challenges to be very honest with you, this is not an easy path by any means. And generally what operators will do is that they're gonna do it by pieces and depending on how you digitalize and, and this is happening from the, from the first from the upfront to then go to the back end or isolate specific areas in which you start your digitalization process. But in any case, if I go back to the cybersecurity front, I think that designing, you know, a, a, you build security by design because whatever you're changing, you then need to be ensuring that you have the security levels that are required. The other thing and the other element that is absolutely important is the last mile, what I always say in cybersecurity, which is people, the users. And this is from where close to 80% of all the problems are gonna come from because people are either not used to not stepping on every single link they get on their emails, not used to following instructions when they, you know, when they get this type of instructions, whether it is on a laptop or it is on the handset. So this challenge is actually one of the greatest ones. And 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 all these zero trust initiatives that in cybersecurity are quite important need to become part of the operation, need to become part of the daily life of the employees. So Digital, digitalization is not a machine kind of thing only. It is a human process in which we all play a big part in understanding that we are digitalizing, but we're also becoming far more responsible on a greater world where we need to protect ourselves. So for us, that has been one of the most important items uh, as we implement because Vodafone Oman, yes, it's born 100% digital, but that doesn't mean that every single employee understands what that means, nor what are the behaviors that are to be behind these implementations. So I, I would say that that will be one of the areas in the transition that is absolutely important to take care of. Yeah. No, no, I totally agree. Cyber, of course, is something uh, might be might be considered as an enemy that, or uh, something will will always make the digital transformation path not straightforward <laughs> because it keeps popping up maybe between yeah. time and time. So moving also into um, uh, Nicholas, uh, when, because knowing your role and uh, the heavy role you had uh, in the past years, of course, in, in Oman, when it's come to building the readiness of the infrastructure, uh, focusing on the 5G as well, etc. How how could you manage or balance between the heavy cost of building all of that things with, with of course, the operating cost, with the investment you are making into that? So maybe this is something interesting I hear between time. Many operators across the globe, they are facing that kind of challenge. They need to, to make sure they have strong strategies to keep balancing the cost and, and also the investment they are making. Well, of course, I mean, if we go back to, 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 to 5G, I mean, there needs to be a return on investment. There has been some return on investment that they, you have the, 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 um, the customer retention, of course, because the, 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 the technology is more attractive. You have added services just as the mobile uh, broadband. And then you hope that's going to be use cases for the enterprise, which is actually the market that is actually growing uh, double digits. So, so, so it is essential for Exxon to help how to for, the, for, for its customer, how to capture that market so the ROI is uh, is attractive and that, and that the business case flies. And this we are working on as we speak, and it will be some kind of, uh, sorry about the expression, but some kind of catch-up effect once it starts and once the core is coming standalone. But in order to have a cost efficiency in our industry, because we are investing roughly $6 billion in R&D year after year, OK, so it's uh, it's a heavy research that is being done in the, those, uh, those, those, those those products. We need to have scale. We need to be all over the world 
and sell a lot of our product so that the marginal cost of the next produce unit becomes lower. So therefore it becomes affordable for, for customer. And we believe we are competitive in that area. Of course, we have serious competition from, uh, from China, from Finland and, and so forth. But this is, this is the name of the game. Everybody has a, has a competitor, but the name of the game is to have economies of scale in this area to justify all R&D investments and also to justify our, our customers' uh, business case, which uh, also has demanding, uh, demanding shareholders. Yeah, great. So, so in your um, back to, to the maybe the also important parts, because how c could you maybe balance or help the small operators, like when it's come to adopting some of the technologies you already maybe implemented or et cetera? Like, do you have already included that part where you see different type of access to different type of, of operators? Because, you know, like big uh, teleco operators, they, they can even build uh, their some of their infrastructure, et cetera. But for smaller one, maybe this is challenging. And even going into renting these or leasing these, I mean, like it, it might be still like not able to adopt the full value to implement it in their so offering. We, we, we have the big customer, the, the, the behemoths, the at and this $15 billion deal that, uh, that uh, has been published. But let, let, let's, uh, let's not share away that Oman is an important country for Ericsson. I mean, it's a, it's a big market for us that, uh, that has big, uh, customers that are prioritized customers also, uh, so they are not small. If you are if you are referring to Oman, they are not, and they are at the forefront of technology. Uh, Oman should be very proud of what they uh, what they have rolled out so far. It is uh, it is uh, internationally competitive. Now, what we need to do is together go to the next step of what can be done with this technology. So. What are we doing for, from, from Ericsson's side? We have created a, a center of excellence with the ministry to train young Omanis on the technology, help them to develop their own business, uh, business, uh, business case use cases uh, for the, the Omani Vision 2040. So we saw them uh, last year, a few of them, very impressive, agriculture, uh, agri-tech based, uh, that are using 5G to uh, enhance the food uh, production in a sustainable way. So that they, this education and all this mentorship program we are doing are just to help out to have this digitalized knowledge uh, being spread uh, in country uh, of a month. So you can develop what you need for yourself with a little bit of help of our, 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 our know-how that we are happy to share. Yeah, no, no, that's great to hear. And, and uh, moving to KK as well to hear from his thoughts. Um, so is there anything you would like to, to share, KK, when it says, knowing that Oridu has done a lot of work, maybe even across the region and their presence outside Oman? So since you mentioned the very interesting facts that when you came to Oman, other than the Haiti, you get also noticeably seen the, the digital transformation across the places and also the efforts has been uh, put together by everyone actually in the, in the past few years into making sure that Oman is becoming into a very mature, in, in, in its way to very mature uh, status when it's come to digital digitalization and transformation. So from your thought, like, um, is there anything you, you sensed, like, uh, giving you the impression that still maybe we, we have some something to be focused on, or at least you identified some of the challenges you already mentioned, maybe you can elaborate more or what you learned from that? Yeah, no, I think Telco, I mean, Telco has the funny and it's not only Oriva, and I think my colleagues will probably agree with me. So Telco has the funny thing that it is a digital industry doing things very analogically, while the big disruptors, I hate the word disruptors, but what people call disruptors are actually analogic companies do things digitally. So now I think we're catching up in that way. Um, it is true that in certain aspects of trying to put the customer at the center and understanding what is what the customer needs or, or to really uh, address the touch points and the moments of truth in an omni channel way, meaning digitally or online and offline, I think it's something that is being done well. And I think it's something that actually we have caught up to a certain extent. The second thing, which are, is what I believe that Telcos has uh, even a more important role and is not a, it's not a role of catching up, but a role of leading, 
is on how do we develop the next use cases and the infrastructure that is really going to take, in this case, Oman to the next level. Uh, I think that uh, Nicolas mentioned that uh, we, and it's something that I also noticed, uh, we are very mature in terms of 5G wired access for the internet. And I think that it is something that is way more developed in Oman than in any other country that I've seen. And I have launched actually fixed WA uh, products in, in Croatia and Slovenia, et cetera. But here is part of the bread and butter. But, but probably the thing is not that much on how to have typical use cases with one particular technology, but how do we develop next technologies to take, as we said, the country to the next level? So what is else to be done on ICT, on IoT? Uh, how are we going to move into uh, SD1? How are we going to create platforms that enables new ways of doing business? Or what I believe is the future of the industry uh, would be more B2B2C and not rather only B2C. So um, serving the demand is something that, as I said, I was quite impressed about uh, Oman has done it. The next level of how do you take the digital society to, to uh, let's say, levels that has not been reached yet, I think is where the future of the industry lays and where uh, Orido and I'm sure my colleagues will do the most of their investments. Yeah, no, great. And, and if we move to Shardia as well to hear, um, since you mentioned a few interesting things in the uh, previous uh, notes you gave, uh, when it's come to challenges and others, I think it's very clear uh, based on what you mentioned uh, to to also stress on the importance of collaboration, of alliances, and the role of third parties that they might be part of your journey in in uh, in that sense. So, would you be able to share with us like any any challenge or that you you came across maybe where you see that's you get successfully sorted by by kind of cooperation or, or working together with someone or even shed the light on any kind of something that you achieved as a success story you would like to share. So maybe I mentioned earlier, uh, one of the obviously, you know, obviously one of the uh, objectives of any telco operator is to basically grow their revenues and their base. But if you look at Oman just in general, right, where uh, uh, Mobile market penetration is at 140 percent, right? Uh, I think fixed broadband, if I'm not mistaken, the last check, last I checked was 75 percent market penetration. So and that's close. I mean, the highest in the world. I think you have at 90 percent. So we're we've been close to there when it comes to fixed broadband. But if you just look at mobile market penetration in general, is at 140 percent. Um, uh, market is not growing, right? The growth population is stagnant. Um, we basically after COVID, we've grown really quite well. I mean, we basically think we're doing approximately almost. 10% growth month on month in terms of growth of population, but that's basically stagnated right now. Actually, there was a negative inflow for the past three months. So what that basically means is that we have to actually focus more on uh, how do we continue growing our base? Uh, how do we basically monetize our base? And, so, and, and, and that basically has to be, you know, we have to think in terms of how, what kind of services can we provide customers? So I said maybe earlier on that we're moving, that, that, I mean, I think in general, Telco in general is moving from a volume-based uh, model to a value-centric model. So it's not a excellent data and, and voice anymore. Uh, it, it's about, okay, what, what can they actually do with that, right? I mean, everybody, all of us probably here, operators basically sell data in abundance. Um, so it's not about that anymore. It's experience. What can they do with it? So uh, predictive modeling is, is essential, right? And, and if you look at from from a telco perspective, you don't have, or at least us, we don't have the necessary skill set to do so. So this is where we are tie up to third parties, uh, allows us to basically get into those, you know, into those domains where we can actually start basically really analyzing our base, understanding okay what makes them tick, profile them, um, and, and provide them with services, make it personalized one to one, where okay fine they can actually use the services for what they actually need, right? Um, so, uh, and then from that, we also, that will basically allow us to move into other areas where we can start leveraging AI and machine learning, because that is a part of some of the things that we're looking at. Okay, now how to basically continue basically targeting these customers and provide them with different verticals. So not only focusing on telco, but looking at things like fintech, so microfinancing. So fintech is a set different operation itself, but from a telco perspective, we can do things like microfinancing. We can provide uh, education as a service. We can provide uh, health as a service, right? Um, last year, we basically launched a, a life insurance program for, for our customers um, that didn't really work very, very well because we didn't really have the, the necessary know-how to basically target our customers. 
And now we basically pull that back. We're using our predictive modeling tool to basically say, how can we profile these customers to target these particular, uh, to target these particular profiles or segments? So uh, it, it's, uh, again, it's, it's, it's an ongoing process. Um, we're, we're learning as we go, um, but it's essential for us to basically tie up with a credible third party, uh, you know, uh, partners in the market that basically have those capabilities and specializations to, to allow us to basically move into these areas and, and, and go our, and again, monetize our base. No, no, great. Uh, Nicholas, I think I will jump to you since uh, there is something uh, which you already mentioned when it's come to partnership and, and your stories or your experience when, when it's come to partnership between maybe the telecos with the third parties with all of this. So would you like to share something more about your uh, experience in, in the partnership? How do you see it in Oman? Is it like happening to, to the way you, you meet your expectation or you think there is more or what are the challenges here? No, but that, that, the, the, the beautiful thing to work in Ericsson as a, a global company in 180 countries that you can get inspired from what happens uh, from the rest of the world and see how you can implement it. And no, no country is like uh, perfect. No country has, a, has everything. So we can always bring ideas to the table. But the partnerships in uh, Oman, I said, I've been working all across the world. It's very, it's very nice. It's very humble. It's very open uh, and it's very professional. Right, what what uh, what's get uh, discussed upon and gets uh, implemented and executed. So the, the demands are quite high, which uh, which we like here at uh, at Ericsson. Then what we could bring more to the table and discuss more are the element that uh, that that Shelley said. Like we have done fintech, uh, I've done big fintech contracts in Africa that we could bring if it had get that could add more value to like a. A portal, uh, portal app for the for the for the operators. We can add more value in uh, health tech, agri tech, uh, based on what we are doing across the world. We can add more value on the the the, the, the factories that we, we are doing. I mean, not only the 5G uh, is produced in the uh, US using 5G technology, so we are we are eating our own uh, on on food here, and it's super efficient. We are replicating that with Porsche, with uh, Tesla, and so some uh, some other companies. If there is some manufacturing on coming in in um, in Oman, we can we can be there. We're also doing a proof of concept with a with a customer with a Google how to put some of the nodes with the feature in the in in cloud environment, and that's a world first with the added feature that we put. So Oman will be the first country uh, to showcase this. So it is at the forefront of technology, and there are really listening on what can be done. And as I said, they are implementing it. It's not just a slide where it happens for uh, for real. So, yeah, we are, we yeah, are very interesting yeah. and to hear about the, the accelerated, I would say, um, efforts in, into supporting the transformation in Oman and, and involving all the relevant experiences and third parties where whoever is, is going to help us. So anything in that same manner, like where do you see also the government is playing into that uh, journey? Like uh, what, when it comes to their importance of contribution and also how you as Teleco are also supporting them? No, but this is... Just if I may come quickly, yeah, please. Uh, this is super important. I wanted just to mention that this vision 2040 is essential for Oman because mm -hmm. that's a guiding star. In Europe, I'm European, so I'm allowed to comment. Uh, <laughs> I'm allowed to comment. We don't, we don't we don't have that. We don't have a vision 2030, 2040, 2050 when it comes to uh, digitalization. That's why we are way, way behind. Uh, compared to the to the rest of the world in in Europe, so that shows the importance of government involving in setting the path for the nation. I'm sorry if I went to. No, no, great, great, and no, no, no. and I think a good a good a good point there because for us what it has meant is that the government of Oman has taken a holistic approach to this, and this is absolutely important because they are the ones that have created the framework, the policies, and the conditions for digital environments to flourish. This, this is where it becomes rather important. If you take Vodafone Oman, Vodafone Oman is already a result of the 2040 vision. A third operator in the country, 100% digital. This is all part of the design of where we need to be as a country. And, and certainly this is where 
other elements come into place that are important. If you take, for example, a couple of policies that the government has brought to life, uh, the financial consumer protection policy, which is fundamentally a policy to cover consumers from uh, financial situations or conditions. But when we go through it, what we understand from it is an excellent foundation to duplicate in the way we do work and digitalization on our own uh, fronts in telco. So there's, there's the importance then of the public-private partnerships something that also the government of Oman supports and and, and, and and creates the conditions so that many companies, whether the government with the private sector come together in order to, pro to provide services. We have a number of examples and actually a number of conditions today in which we're working with the government to precisely enable that. And the more we speak to SMEs in Oman, and liaise them with government initiatives in a better position we are and the better we are no nurturing the, the environment of digitalization in order to get to where um, we need to get as a country. We are playing only our part on, in the telecom environment, but it's a vital part because this is part of everybody's way or the gateway of everybody to get to the next level of things that they will need to get. Well, today, for example, if you take uh, in our app, you're able to buy parking services, which is an all service done by SMS, but now you can select a number of things from the app. So you can not just decide on, on where you are and the timings and whatever else, but it's just seamless. You don't need to go anywhere. You don't need to remember anything. You just do it from the app. You just step a tile and that's it. You are one click away from doing things. So this facilitation from the government has been absolutely pivotal in, in creating the conditions to, to the results that you see today in Oman and, and to what efficiently uh, Kike is referring to with respect to the digitalization of the country. How many services in Oman today can you get to that you... Do, do that you can actually do through, through your mobile phone, most of them by now. And uh, just recently, ROP won the best app in COMEX. I mean, that's that only comes from the commitment of the government to invest on what's necessary for the population at large. No, no, great. And, and forgive me, Anis, I will not leave you without a cybersecurity question as well, since you, you opened that window. <laughs> so just one thing, topic? yeah, so, so just one thing which is relevant since we are talking, and you mentioned also the um, heavy exposure or, or few, when using all of these services to the internet, to the, to the connection, um, and the, the increasing risks coming or cyber threats. Mm -hmm. So you mentioned already something in that part which clicked in my mind and to ask you what how what kind of maybe emerging technologies you have already adopted or you seen like it's it's effective to help us in both two two folds i would say one to ensure like we we deal with the cyber part but at mm -hmm. the same time also to accelerate maybe the our digital transformation like the ai or something so have have there been any use cases or something you adopt to to ensure that you are benefiting from that yeah of course we when um when we started the process here we also ensure that we will be able to cover everything that is going on within our within our environment so from endpoint protection which is fundamentally we are able to take care of everything and, and have the visibility on everything happening on our servers on the laptops on the uh, very soon to come on the mobile phones um, that allows to see uh, not only what's happening but also one of the use cases that we have introduced successfully is actually the use of decoys. And that, what that means is that we're able to simulate things to attract anybody who can do harm or want to do harm to the company. And then we're able to identify what's going on before it even becomes a reality. So having these kind of uh, technologies have been quite important in protecting not only ourselves, but by default, protecting our customers. I think that you know, the more of these technologies that we do, the more that we assess the risks every time we open up and bring in new technologies to be able to assess. 
because there is no 100% mm. coverage of everything there is. There are people out there that are far more intelligent than most of us are. So we, we just need to be very upfront with the technology and we have done that. We have embraced every new working technology in cybersecurity that is in the in, in the world. And we've done it successfully to the point that we are now being asked to participate on a number of forums and a number of collaborations on the cybersecurity front. Mm -hmm. So this for us is critical. Yeah. But then again, I go back to what I said before. It all goes back to the people and how mm -hmm. you create the level of adoption and responsibility of people using the technology. Um, mm -hmm. I think that we have a couple of very good cases today with uh, automation. AI is critical in the process developing, especially with uh, with cybersecurity as it refers to cybersecurity, because at the end it's also about we have it, we're having eyes that are looking 24/7, 365 days, what's going on, and 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 every single movement in the network. Yeah. You know, I agree, and and thank you very much for sharing these kind of um, success stories uh, with us, with everyone. I think, Chadley, uh, back to you. Um, you mentioned. A lot of important elements today. So thank you very much for sharing your thoughts and sharing your experiences. So I think when it's come to to the to sustaining the growth within the digital ambition and also like what is your perspective into that? What how do you plan to to accelerate maybe your digital ambition by to achieve that sustainable growth? And what, what, after that, of course, we we should also maybe talk about. What is your expectation or perception on the role that ICT is playing or even will play more in, in the nationwide economic development and in link, of course, with the Vision 2040 and some other like uh, frameworks in place? Uh, so basically, I think I mentioned earlier that uh, we're part of Beyond One Group. Um, so Beyond One Group, essentially, um, their modus operandi or their, their mission and objective is to um, create a, a digital aggregator platform that Telco basically is the bedrock and basically has multiple verticals um, uh, that uh, creates this digital community. And the idea is to basically create that as a hub and then plug it into different markets. So we know that Oman is one market, we have KSA is another market, Kuwait and UAE is another market. We also have Latin as another market, you know, Chile, Colombia, and Mexico. So th those are all fall under the, the realm of Beyond the Group. And the idea is that what they're doing is They've created essentially like a digital factory in place where we can also leverage from and basically establish synergies across the different markets. So what we what we're doing in the sense is that we're we're taking the learnings that are happening across different markets, whatever is being established in the digital factory, and what they're doing in the, the digital factory. So basically, our technology uh, department uh, in, in the central hub is called the digital factory, and what they basically do is they've done multiple. Uh, uh, um, they've got multiple developments that leveraging AI, machine learning, okay, um, with plugging with a lot of people with support from data scientists to establish a lot of diff these different kinds of services. Um, be it from uh, especially myself, I, we don't, we're not necessarily be able to move into the cybersecurity front, but that's a part of one of the elements, right? So when you look at like the how we plug into data centers over here, uh, right now you have you know uh, AWS coming in, so we're basically partnering with them. Uh, to establish and leverage their services, you have Google also basically coming in as a sovereign cloud, uh, you know, uh, sovereign cloud into basically one of the DCs. So we're 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 looking at all these different basically uh, uh, streams in terms of like what what can we do to basically establish that in terms of helping us build our verticals. Um, and and again, when we, we say verticals, I'm not we're not saying telco in general, but basically what is the value that we can build on top of that. So that's that's where we're going. Maybe if I can pivot to one of the one, one of the questions that was basically mentioned earlier, where where we see how we, we integrate or how we basically uh, uh, aligned with the 2040 vision, that's exactly what we're we're aiming to do, right? So when we look at, I look at the challenge that we have is that we have the working class where the digital inclusion as is, is a major uh, major issue, uh, and again, it comes to down to their wages, the price sensitivity, um, you know, how they basically actually use an app. Uh, from onboarding to utilization, you know, managing the whole thing autonomously, because these are the kind of people that still want physical engagement. So how do we basically get them online? So by left, by moving to a value-based model and get, getting services and you know profiling of what they actually want, 
Okay, we believe that we can create those kind of uh, those elements. And we, we think that is one of the main you know, pillars of the, the 24 or 24 division is creating the digital inclusion across basically the digital economy and uh, you know, as a part of the digital inclusion for the entire society. So it, it's, a, it's, a, it's an ambition that we have, it's an ambition that beyond one has. Um, we are uh, aligned on that vision. It's a top bottom approach, it's a complete mindset. So I go back to what Annette was saying. It's the people, mindset, everybody. It starts from the top all the way to the bottom. Everybody has to basically, so it's a, it's a challenge in itself to get the necessary talent and get the necessary know-how to basically execute that. It's something that we're basically building on a daily basis. And uh, it's something that we're looking forward to. Yeah. So it's, and, it's challenging, but it's interesting at the same time. No, no, it is, it is. And, and it's a very valid point uh, you mentioned that. So, so KK, since, since uh, I always, sorry, refer to you as our reference when it's come to seeing the things maybe from, from outside and also <laughs> maybe in more uh, different angle. So, so talking about this, like, what do you see is happening around? Like, what, what is your expectation or, or do you, have you noticed like any challenges uh, already around you when it's come to the workforce maybe required? Required to 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 perform the digital transformation in an effective manner within the telcos. Do you see, for example, there is gap in skill sets since since telecom, for example, infrastructure is, is becoming now in, more into the surface. And in, in, in that any discussion of digital transformation with its legacy system, with its maybe some some of these challenges uh, being fixed or addressed recently in the new technologies. I think still there might be some some challenges which has not maybe been discussed or you would like to elaborate more. I think for me the most important thing is what you see, going back to the point that I mentioned before of us being a digital product sold in an analogical way, I think we don't have the level of expertise when it comes to IT and with, let's say, our CIOs are typically in the industry, not as strong as the network uh, guys. So I think th there is a very big discrepancy between how to invest in the assets and have a proper, let's say, layer of, in terms of infrastructure. But then when it comes to really monetize that infrastructure, products, but products as bundles of minutes and data, and, and that's mainly it. And we don't have people really defining the customer journey, which again, if you take the example of the different industries that I was telling you, uh, the Netflix of the world, they don't need to have the best content. They just have the best way to reach customers, the more, let's say, personalized engines, the better recommendation uh, tools. We are not there yet. We don't have people defining what it is getting to the customer in a way that the digital first mentality is there. We don't have marketeers that understand what is the IT architecture. Um, so I think that it's not that much of actually uh, breaching a very big gap. I don't think the future of the industry is going to be defined by having people that ubiquitously are data scientists and they know how to do AI. I think with all the hype of that, I think we have a lot of things to solve first. But the, definitely what is going to change the industry and who is going to keep the relevance that telcos should have when they reach customers is the ability to define what the customer needs or what the customer wants, bearing in mind that the way that we have to interact with them is not the same one that has happened before. So the knowledge gap, it is not so hard to crack as of now. It is more to really understand how to do how to go to market in a very different way. Yeah, so so thank you first of all for sharing your personal perspective, of course, but I, I would definitely not say like I agree fully or disagree, but, but I think what you are referring is uh, might be very relevant when we talk about very high expectation, not even of the current uh, like uh, target or, or where we want to reach in, in digital transformation. But I think uh, many of the organization agree with you, like they might have some areas where they can enhance. And, and I have seen like, uh, if you agree with me, the rest of panelists, we, we are open so, so we can uh, discuss uh, uh, and and uh, keep debating but but i think there is a lot of efforts happening um we acknowledge
acknowledge the issue of uh, lack in, in some areas and, and there is a lot of efforts where even the skill sets is not a problem to many of the telecos operators, all of these things. But I think we are referring to maybe a higher expectation, which might be in some areas that we are... Uh, looking predictively and also to, to enter where there might be still some challenges under the progress of uh, resolving. Any any point on this from the rest of panelists? But uh, but I, I just wanted to mention that so the audience will not just take it as generalized statements that <laughs> we don't have the expertise, we don't have the, the powerful people and, and doing all of that. So, don't get me wrong. Yeah. Don't get me wrong. I'm not. I'm not referring to. If I just make one comment, I'm not referring to yeah, the yeah. situation in Oman. I think that from an industry perspective, yes, yes. Um, okay. there's a lot of gap to bridge because the industry has not been at the forefront of digital experiences. So yeah. I think, and I'm talking about not only in Oman but in every single operator that I have yeah. looked at, we were thinking always on onboarding journeys that uh, probably has been done before in Revolut and in Telco when Revolut is banking going from a traditional business to digital while yeah. we are a digital asset. I think that in the way that we, let's say, um, try to cover that gap, I don't think it's a problem if you understand digitalization from a network perspective. I think that everyone knows how Spectrum works, what radio is, uh, how, let's say, the different infrastructure, both of this and mobile work. But if you think, for example, about what is a CDP, what is a CMP, how do you actually reach out to audiences in a digital way? I don't think we have the level of maturity as an industry. And to be completely honest, I think that Oman is a little bit more advanced than any other countries, but uh, probably not to the level that will allow us to reach into a fully digitalization. Yeah, yeah. So I see, Shadley, you'd like to say something. Please go ahead. Yeah, yeah. so just just to add, so like, you know, um, so Oman's ambition, obviously 2040 vision ambition is, is quite, quite ambitious, right? I mean, we're talking about 10% of our GDP should come from, from the digital economy by then. Um, I think, and you have, I think, uh, uh, ways in where it's 2% right now, I think it has to be 5% by 2030 and 2040, we need to get to 10%, 10% and that is quite ambitious, right? Um, so, and, and maybe just to echo a little bit of what Kiki is saying, and, and maybe from what my experience in the market is, is that, so talent is, is there, and you see more and more of this coming up. You know, I have a lot of relatives, family, people that I know, and a lot of them basically are either moving into, uh, like my sister, actually, my sister, She's basically moving into, she wants to be a data analyst. And I have my little brother that actually basically wants to get into cybersecurity. So you have those elements. The one thing that I think that we need to do, um, and, and the government's done a fantastic job so far, right? I mean, they've, they've laid the groundwork, they've facilitated, um, they're at the forefront. I think this year, from my understanding, from my read, is that we've grown year over year, 60% uh, in terms of more contract signs, or, or in terms of uh, investments in terms of AI, uh, uh, you know, we have more companies, more SMEs basically going out of incubations. Uh, so I think there, there has been a lot of ways of work. But one thing that I think that we also need to do is that we're, we're getting into getting into really basically investing in digital economy, it, we require, it still requires a lot of capital injection. And uh, this is one thing that I think that is, as, as we go along, it's going to become, because if you look at our the region in general, uh, I think um, from uh, Saudi so basically injected $40 billion in terms of uh, AI, you know, in enhancing the AI, uh, uh, just AI in general, generative AI, and UAE is basically done the same thing. So I think in terms of where we need to get to uh, with regards to um, um, enhancing our talent capabilities is, is there, but we need to basically take it to another notch, one step higher if you basically want to get to 2040 uh, ambition, the, the, you know, ambitious goals that, that's, that's been laid out. So um, I, I think we're 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 in a it's, it's a good we're in a good trend where uh, like basically we're we're moving in the, in in, the, in a good direction. Um, we, we just it, it just need to accelerate a little bit more um, to get to that particular point. Um, yeah, that's just the point that I wanted to raise. No, no, great, great point, uh, both KK and and uh, Shadli. I think. Uh, since we are reaching almost like uh, near to the end of our main uh, discussion time, but I, I want also to shed the light, not talking only or focusing about the current where we are. I think uh, talking about also our ambition for the next. So, so moving to Nicholas. Um, so what 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 is next? So we have achieved a lot of bright uh, achievements when it's come to digital transformation and that journey. But what is next? 
so so what is next is to go to the next step of the the um, what the purpose of 5g that's that that's the next there are four purpose of 5g i mean it's enhanced mobile broadband is fwa those oman uh world class then it's mission critical networks and iot uh, that remains so mission mission critical networks or use cases that requires the um, the parameters that 5G is able to do, like this ultra low latency, you press a button here, the uh, the reaction is immediate uh, on the other side of the network or wherever you are. So you can be in your in your in your couch and uh, and unload containers in a, in a in a port, for example, just just to illustrate the the, the, the example. But this technology is really important latency in the, in, the, in 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 automated score in in factory that needs real precision. I've been working myself in the, in factories when I was younger, so I, I understand the, the 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 precision aspect and the safety aspect also. Uh, not having lots of wire on the on on the floor, all these use cases uh, needs to needs to be um, to be real and and, and done and. The enthusiasm is there. We see it uh, coming over, as I said, with the Ericsson factory in the US. We see it in other other plants uh, uh, in Europe, and we see them growing slowly. I mean, in Oman also, I forgot to mention that there is some 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 work with an operator and Nvidia to develop cloud gaming. All right, so 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 this this is this is coming. I mean, it, it's it's under the surface, but it's coming, and it's going to be some 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 catch up effect. So that that's the next step to really. Uh, use the potential of 5G with the standalone core and maybe using the hyperscaler to host those those devices uh, in order to create more performance and more more efficiencies, if any. We'll, 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 we'll see about that. But there is absolutely more to do. Uh, we've been with Oman for 50 years. We have seen the, the, the drive and the enthusiasm of Omani and the, that they are, they are executing on, on their visions. And um, we are there to continue on that journey with uh, with the, the people of Oman. Yeah, great. And thank you again for your Ericsson commitment into that journey and making sure like they have heavy contribution as long as uh, and, and as well as the, the rest of uh, our organization and teleco operators. Uh, moving to Anif, Anif, uh, the same question would, would be applicable to you. Like what, what is next in your site? Uh, the development of uh, use cases on 5G. I fully agree with uh, Nicholas. I think that the FWA case has been made, but on 5G specifically, IoT and use cases, specific use cases at a larger scale in Oman are required in order to really drive all the possibilities with the network. No, uh, I am I'm certainly at that point. I think that digitalization, again, at the end or on the side of the customers will continue its strong path. Uh, I don't doubt that we will get to a point in the next five years that uh, we will have we will reach 100% digitalization of the country. But at the end, it's also about how we also engage other, other things in the, in, in the use of the technology in the country. And that will come fundamentally from IoT and other use cases. Yeah, and Chadli, on your side as well, what's happening next, inshallah? Yeah, so I mean, one of the major things that we're looking at in terms of our type of transformation is to really, um, uh, really, really basically uh, focus on the digital, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, moving again from volume centric to basically value based centric, uh, focusing on basically applying multiple verticals, and enhancing custom experience. Um, you know, as we know, we, we don't own a network, but so we leverage from others, uh, and also basically. Uh, you know, accessing and uh, you know the, the advanced networks to uh, enhance customer experience. That's going to be essential for us. Um, use cases for me, like I mean, IoT for me has always been a buzzword, but it's it's there, right? So you know that smart cities and these elements are coming into the forefront. But um, again, it's going back to how we can uh, enhance customer experience through value. Um, how how can we basically you know uh, you know personalize the experience in a much more digital fashion? Um, and um, and and uh, yeah, and, and establishing different verticals to to uh, to engage with them. So that's going to be a core focus going into a couple of coming years. Great, great. And KK, since we are wrapping the the discussion, please. Uh... 
and anything from I your side? Match, no, no, I would, I would not match from what the, the colleague said. I think we all said all. Uh, we are providing the fabric of the next level and the next generation of use cases. We need to understand how to monetize things. I believe that actually B2C by itself is not going to be uh, specifically the way of doing it. I see that the industry will move more into creating the infrastructure in which B2B2C use cases will flourish. ICT, IoT, and many other other things that industry for the road will be driven by the whole infrastructure that we are putting together. So, tight in future. Great, great. And, and it was very interesting. Unfortunately, um, we have time limits, which is always the case, which uh, which uh, doesn't allow us to go in, in that interesting discussion and learning more. I'm pretty sure there is many, many things uh, as experiences, as thoughts, as successful achievements has been done by everyone of you and everyone in, in this country when it's come to aligning to the Oman Vision uh, 2040. Uh, however, I hope we will have another chance again uh, and if you please stay on the line so now we we are also keen to to address any questions that our audience have so maybe christine we can move to some of the questions beside also we have prepared some of the polls um, that we would like our audience to to participate uh, to to help us in understanding what's what's in and also their experiences or thoughts uh, in that regard also our panelists you can uh, if there is any advice you would uh, also provide to an, anyone like whether it's uh, yourself or people in, in teleco operators or whatever whether it's in Oman or in general anywhere else like what is your advice would be when for anyone who's uh, going through the digital transformation journey as a closing maybe word or something while we have some questions I my start. I mean, my advice would be, I mean, as was said on the on the on the call, I mean everybody knows about the radio, the core, and feeling in all those those classic nodes that have been around for, for, for decades. But my advice would be keep on upskilling yourselves with the latest. I mean, uh, now we read a lot on AI, learn everything you can on AI. Uh, learn everything you can on the IT stack or, or whatever you have gaps. So those use cases can happen. Learn about the verticals. What, what, uh, how does a port operate? How does a bank function? I mean, there is so much knowledge everywhere. Try to embrace everything so, so those use cases happen because they will not happen by themselves. They will be happening by people that have educated themselves and have the drive to make a difference using the existing technology because everything is there. Everything is laid out. Is just there to use. So I'm spending every week to upskill myself. I mean, it's it's hard in the beginning, but then you get caught up in it and uh, it's, it's hard actually to stop. So uh, I encourage you to do the same. No, no, great, great advice. I think we have some polls as well. So let me just leverage the time and, and start pulling some of the polls to our audience so they can participate and, and give their response. So we will show to our audience, uh, we will show a few questions that will pop up in your screen. So please, if you are kindly helping us with participation uh, by respond to these polls. So I think now you can see the fair question, uh, which is which aspect of Oman digital journey will ex ex accelerate further in the coming years based on your uh, thought and expectation do you think like for example the smart city development would be maybe more as aspect that will have the priority and the development you would see or whether it's the e-government services which already started and maybe it get accelerated or you would say the other telecom advancement itself, digital economy, growth, or even the talent empowerment, which has been already raised and discussed by our uh, valued panelists. So we'll keep the question open, uh, the poll for one minute. So we still have a few seconds and then we will share the result. So what do you think our panelists, what, any guess? What, what do you think that, <laughs> keep it ready in your mind. <laughs> maybe don't say it uh, to not influence our audience, but keep guess maybe if you see the screen and.
Yeah. I think we, we can now close the first question of the poll and see the result. <clears throat> okay, so our audience, they believe uh, based on the question we, uh, we ask about which aspect exactly of the Oman digital journey will accelerate further in the coming years. So I think, I don't know if you can see the answer. So the most like common answer we got on the telecom advancement, which reflect also the expectation. <laughs> That will that is uh, and responsibility on your side to advance uh, the telecom sector with the 5G with enhanced uh, connectivity with all of these that will definitely have bigger impact. After this, uh, I think what's coming next is the uh, digital economy growth, which is I think uh, linked in all cases. So let me move to the other questions uh, and maybe we'll give chance if we have time for any comments from the panelists, but if they whether they agree or disagree. <laughs> Okay, so you can see uh, the full orders of based on the responses we get from our audience. I think the lowest uh, we get is uh, the talent empowerment. So I think we have some issue here on confidence <laughs> that talent empowerment will, will be accelerating in the which I don't totally agree. I think with all the efforts happening, with even the telecos efforts bringing the best talents from all their global like presence to, to our region, I think this is uh, hopefully we will uh, demonstrate the opposites. Very interesting. Yeah, so moving into also, um, let me share again because there was also the other questions. Um, apologize for that. So the second question was, uh, what do you believe is the biggest challenge for Oman digital transformation? I think the majority, they, they believe digital infrastructure when it's come to developing robust and wide uh, spread digital networks. Um, so this is definitely something uh, with the contribution of telecoms and and, and uh, operators and others, I think we we are going through a lot of advancement here. Um, secondly, uh, which share the same uh, weight, I would say the skill gap, the cyber security concern, and regulatory frameworks, which are all um, no one actually believed the public awareness is is a challenge. <laughs> <laughs> as as a biggest challenge so i think yeah which which might be coming from uh, everyone believe that our day to day life is anyway is is we are aware of the importance of the digital transformation we are important about our role etc the third question which is uh, about the technologies so which technology we believe it's most sig significant impact on a man digital future so most people believe like artificial intelligence or AI, it, it will have a big role into transforming the industries. And then followed by the Internet of Things, IoT, um, with that massive connectivity, the more data we'll be gathering and also utilizing. And I think uh, next, which is the 5G networks and cloud computing, which came to, to the same uh, rank based on the responses, as well as the big data analytics. So thank you very much for all who who participated in this, and definitely we 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 are very like honored to have you all uh, from from panelists and from audience, and we hope you really enjoyed the discussions. And unfortunately, because of the time, I think we still have few minutes left. If there is any comment from the panelists they would like to add on on the poll responses, or otherwise, we can I think wrap uh, the webinar. So is there any anything or just proceed with wrapping? All right. So I think we are good. Thank you very much, our uh, valued panelists. We really appreciate uh, all the thoughts, all the experiences you shared, and we really hope to see you again, maybe in future discussions, uh, sharing your thoughts and new experiences that you will definitely build until that time and, and the lessons. Uh, thank you very much, uh, very much also to our audience who, who spent the time with us and enjoyed, hopefully, the discussions and, and uh, wishing you a very pleasant day. So thank, thank you very much. Have a good day. Thank you. Thank you. Have a great day. Bye-bye.